Hey everyone, welcome to the Easy 104 exam preparation series. So let me start this series or today's video by asking a simple question. So has any one of you already cleared the Easy 104 exam and is looking for the renewal of the certification? If yes, then please share your experiences in the comment section so that the community at large can be benefited and they also understand what kind of questions are coming, how to prepare for the exams. You add your experiences and I will surely add my experiences. This way, the community at large will be benefited and they will be able to clear the exams without much hassles. Okay, so anyways, in today's video, I'm going to take multiple questions that will cover a variety of concepts such as Azure subscription, SKUs, virtual machine and virtual networks. And you know what friends, in today's video, I will try to confuse you, I will test your knowledge, I will see how well prepared you are for the easy 104 exam. And of course, as always, I will share some Microsoft documentation so that you can do some further learning and also validate the questions. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started and jump into the very first question for today. And and here it is. So let's begin the part 29 with question number 171. And here you can see this question here. Now friends, I have three more variation of the same question. So in total, I'm going to present you four variation of the same question. So in these kind of questions, my friends, please be very careful in the exam because in real AZ 104 exam, these kind of questions where the question is exactly the same and you're presented with different solution. These are part of one question set. And once you have attended or answered all the questions in this question set, you will not be able to return to these questions in the review screen. So you will just get one shot to attend these questions. So read these questions very carefully while answering. Okay, so now let's read the question here. It says that you have an Azure subscription that contains the virtual machine as shown in the following table. So here you can see this table here and we have name, name of the virtual machine. Then we have public IP SKU. We also have what are these virtual machines connected to and then lastly we are given with the status. So let's read the value for each virtual machine. So first of all virtual machine 1, the public IP SKU is given none here. Then it is connected to the VNet 1 or virtual network 1 which is under the subnet 1. And then the status of this virtual machine is stopped or deallocated. Moving on with the virtual machine 2 which is given here and you can see the public IP SKU for this virtual machine 2 is basic. It is connected to VNet 1 which is in the subnet 2 and the status for this virtual machine it is running. Then you can read question is saying that you have to deploy a load balancer that has the following configuration. First of all, we are given with the name of the load balancer, which is LB1. The type of the load balancer is internal. And then we have standard SKU. Last value is given for the virtual network is VNet1, which is the name of the virtual network. Now the question says that you need to ensure that you can add virtual machine 1 and virtual machine 2 to the backend pool of LB1. And sorry for this mistake, this is not L81, but this is LB1, which is the name of the load balancer. Moving on, the solution is saying that you create a basic SKU public IP address and then you associate the address to the network interface of virtual machine 1 and then restart the virtual machine. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And this is not the correct solution. That's why no is the correct answer. Now here I present in the question number 172, one more variation of the same question. So question is exactly the same. Let's read the solution here. It says that you disassociate the public IP address from the network interface of VM2, which is virtual machine 2. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And once again, my friends, this is an incorrect solution. That's why no is the correct answer. So please wait for two more variation and then I will give you the correct reasoning and the documentation associated with it. So here comes the third variation. Question number 173. Question is exactly the same. Let's read the solution here. It says that you create a standard SKU public IP address and then you associate the address to the network interface of virtual machine 1 and then stop the virtual machine 2. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And once again, this is an incorrect solution. That's why no is the correct answer. So now let's check out the last variation and the correct solution. So here it comes. Question number 174. Now the solution is saying that you create two standard SKU public IP addresses and associate the standard SKU public IP address to the network interface of each virtual machine. Please note the difference. In previous questions, we were associating the network interface by either of the virtual machine. But here we are associating the network interface with both of the virtual machines. Does this solution meet the goal? Yes or no? And yes, my friends, this time it is the correct solution. That's why yes is the correct answer. 
Okay, so now let's demystify the question and understand why exactly we picked this solution as the correct answer. So first of all, my friends, you need to understand that you can only attach virtual machine in the same region. Not just that, they should also have a standard SKU public IP configuration and no public IP configuration. Now friends, all the IP configurations must have a same virtual network. Secondly, you do not need to have a public IP address assigned to a load balancer to ensure it gets added to the backup pool of load balancer which is the ask of the question as well now to better understand the solution let's also understand what is the backend pool management so here you can read in this documentation that the backend pool is a critical component of the load balancer and the backend pool defines the group of resources which will serve the traffic for a given load balancing rule now friends on the same documentation if you scroll to the very bottom you will reach to this section here which says limitation and the very first limitation given here it says that the IP based backends can only be used for standard load balancers. So this is why my friends the solutions given in the previous questions with the basic SKU is not the correct solution. And also my friends I really took the concept of load balancer in quite some detail in the part 27. So please watch that part and I also explained the concept of Azure Virtual Machine Scale Set. So really two very important concept load balancer and Azure Virtual Machine Scale Set when it comes to making your application really scalable and available. And additionally, my friends, you can also check out this documentation given here, which is a quick start to create an internal load balancer to load balance your virtual machine in the Azure portal. And with this documentation, you can really understand how the load balancer or the internal load balancer work and how it really load balances the traffic which is coming from the external network or let's just say open internet to your virtual machines. And once again, I want to reiterate my friends that in these kind of questions, you will not get a second chance. So please read these questions and the solutions very carefully. In the real AZ-104 exams, the solutions are very similar. So you will get really confused in these solutions. And now let's move on to the next question, question number 175. The question is saying that you have an Azure subscription that contains a resource group named RG1. Now this RG1, which is the resource group, contains an Azure virtual machine named named VM1 and you need to use this virtual machine as a template to create a new Azure virtual machine. And in case you do not know what are the templates, well, the templates are the ARM templates. And in case you're not aware what exactly are the templates, well, essentially, when we are talking about the templates, it's essentially the ARM templates or ARM templates. And yes, there is a very latest concept related to the templates and that is Azure Bicep files. And in the previous episode, I took a very important concept on Azure Bicep. And also I gave a really structured way to understand Azure Bicep. What are the comparisons of Azure Biceps? What are the differences between the Azure Bicep? and the Azure ARM templates, the JSON files basically. And I also explained what are the benefits of using Azure Bicep. So please watch the last question of the part 28, the previous part. But for now, let's move on with this question. It says that which three methods you can use to complete the task. Now, each correct answer presents a complete solution and you have to select all the correct answers that apply. Now, let's check out the options given here. The option A is that from the cloud shell, you have to run the get AZ VM and new AZ VM CMT LEDs. And then we have option B, which says that from the Azure cloud shell, you have to run the save AZ deployment script log and also the new AZ resource group deployment CMD let and then option C says that from the Azure cloud shell you have to run the save AZ deployment template and the new AZ resource group deployment CMD let and then we have option D which is from the RG1 which is the resource group select the export template then you select the download and then from the Azure cloud shell you have to run the new AZ resource group deployment CMD let and lastly, the option E is from the virtual machine one, you have to select the export template and then select deploy. So here we have quite some confusing options, but let's see the correct option. And that is option D that from the RG1, the resource group one, you have to select the export template, select download, and then from the Azure cloud shell, you have to run the new AZ resource group deployment CMT let. And friends, as an Azure administrator, you really need to understand what are the ARM templates, what is Azure Bicep, so really need to understand quite related concepts and many questions come from these. And to begin with, you can use this documentation that tells you how to use the Azure portal to export a template. You can read all the intricacies of this one. And then once you understand how can you export the template from the Azure portal, then you can jump on 
to this documentation here that will explain you how can you use the Azure PowerShell to export a template. So with these two documentation, you can understand how to export the template from the Azure portal and also from the PowerShell. And once you have done that, my friends, you have really understood what is Azure ARM template. You can also refer the documentation that I mentioned in the previous part 28 to really understand the concept of Azure templates and Azure bicep. And then you can also refer this documentation here that tells you how to automate the Azure task using script with PowerShell. So my friends, I hope you like the questions and I'm sure that this gave you some insights on how well prepared are you for the AZ-104 exam. In case you have some doubts, questions, feedback, suggestions, do let me know in the comment section. You can also reach me at connectors at the rate the techblackboard.com and in case you're looking for the PDF files with all the questions and the answers for various exam series on Microsoft Azure and Amazon AWS, then please do consider joining the community membership that you can do by using the join button. And that's all for today. I will See you in the next video till then stay fit keep learning and thanks for watching